All right, let's get this thing going here. We've got John Vervedo's Artisan XX. So here's why I'm so excited. This is the fix of the entire John Vervedo's line as they started to go downhill. Now I briefly touched on this in a top 10, so I'll try not to go too and blabber on about this too much basically, but they really kind of peaked with Artisan Pure. You know, they had a, a, an amazing, a stunning backlog built up with uh, Vintage, the original, Artisan Aqua, Artisan Blue, John Vervedo's Oud, Platinum, right? They had a lot of amazing ones. They got John Vervedo's Artisan Pure out there. That one went absolutely crazy. Then it sold out everywhere. Couldn't get it here in the US easily at all for several months to maybe even a year. It was very hard to get. And once they started releasing after that, you know, like XX Indigo and uh, uh, John Vervedo's uh, Blue, something along those lines, not Aqua, bl not Blue Aqua, but just Blue or something like that, it started to go downhill really quick. And so, uh, I don't know, they just kind of dropped the ball there. And it was getting to the point where I was no longer looking forward to a new John Vervedo's release. But when they dropped Artisan XX and I smelled it, I was like, okay, this is the redeeming factor here. And what's crazy is I dropped the ball as well, and I haven't done a full review on this one yet. I went and double checked on my channel, haven't done it. I did a first impressions almost exactly one year ago. So, you know, last year in March, I did my first impressions, somehow forgot to do a full review, but now I'm going to. So we're gonna be checking this one out. I'm gonna tell you how it smells, how it performs, when you can wear it, and if I think it's worth picking up, which probably answered for itself. So what this one is all about is it opens up with a nice bright sour orange and immediately following that orange is a vetiver, a relatively soapy vetiver. You know, that note can go in so many different directions, whether it be uh, earthy and spicy and dry and smoky, or it could be lighter, brighter, soapy, clean, that sort of thing. And that's kind of the direction that it goes in there. Um, it's not too strong. It's not like a Terre d'Hermes O Intense Vetiver or the original Terre d'Hermes. It's not that direction. It's fresher and more clean. And ultimately, that makes it more mass pleasing as well. So it's a nice soapy clean vetiver, orange up top, a little bit of a spiciness coming through as well from the Sichuan pepper. So I want to also take a look at the bottle here. It has this kind of metallic flake to the gray paint. It looks very modern, very trendy. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is not only because I like the look of it a lot, which I do for sure, it looks amazing, but also because it looks modern and trendy because it is modern and trendy. So, you know, it's a vetiver fragrance. And if I had to put it into a category of other fragrances that are similar to it, I would put it in the category of something like a Dior Homme 2020, okay? The Cashmere and Isui Super Woody fragrance, right? Bergamot, I would put it into that category. Now, I'm not saying that this and Dior Homme 2020 smell the same or are, you know, incredibly similar, I'm categorizing here. You know, if I had to look and think, okay, you know, there's Aqua de Jo over there, there's Spice Bomb, there's uh, Givenchy Gentleman, there's Dear Home 2020. That's kind of where I would put this one because it is modern and woody and a little bit kind of citrusy, you know, fruity, spicy up top. We'll go ahead and take a look at the full note breakdown here. Up top, we have bitter orange and bergamot. In the mid, we have Sichuan pepper, wormwood, and geranium. And in the base, we have vetiver, cedar, and musk. So pretty healthy looking note breakdown. Very woods heavy down below. We've got some, you know, some pepper and a little bit of an aromatic touch in the mid with the geranium, that sort of thing. And of course, up top, we've got citrus fruits going on. So it is all about the bitter orange. A little bit of bergamot comes in on top as well to complement that orange. And uh, the Sichuan pepper is also right there. As soon as you pull the trigger, really giving it a little bit of a spicy kick, kind of... Uh, you know, makes you, uh, you know, direct your attention to this one. It is a head turner right off the bat. It's not one that opens up boring and flat and you're like, oh, you know, yeah, that smells nice, but whatever. As soon as you spray this one on, it gets your attention. It commands your attention. But as I mentioned, you know, as soon as you get past that opening blast, it's all about the vetiver, all about the woods. 
A little bit of musk here and there will be present in the far dry down, but it's not overly musky or strong. It's kind of just there in the background to uh, add a little bit of support underneath the woods. But it is primarily vetiver and, and kind of peppery, orange heavy in the dry down. Now, when you see the vetiver and the pepper and the orange, you immediately think Terre de Hermes, right? They tried to almost hide it in a way and say bitter orange and Sichuan pepper, right? But it still looks similar. But I'm here to tell you that it really isn't that close to Terre de Hermes. While it may look so blatantly from just taking a look at the note breakdown, the Fragrantica geniuses are going to be like, oh, that's a Terre de Hermes clone and they've never smelled it in their life. They've probably never smelled Terre de Hermes either. They've probably just heard about it. It's not that simple, right? There is differences here. And what I like so much about this one is the dimension because it opens up smelling like artisan. You know, it has that same orange note that is used in the original artisan, artisan aqua, a lot of the artisan fragrances, right? So it, it kind of ties back to the line. It is an artisan flanker after all, so it's not completely random. It does tie back, but the vetiver comes through immediately and shifting the focus from being, you know, fresh and summery like an artisan to be more soapy and work friendly and almost like an office fragrance or something more upscale. So this one is an eau de toilette concentration and it does suffer from mediocre performance like most of the John Varvatos fragrances do, which is, I don't even wanna say it's unfortunate because that's just how the brand is. If you look across the board, even John Varvatos Oud, like I talked about earlier, it's got Oud, leather, uh, I don't even know what else, a whole bunch of notes, heavy notes, you know, Tonka, probably tobacco and a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of their heavy fragrances still just clock out at moderate performance. No difference here. I wish I could tell you it was beast mode, but it's not. It's a good five, six hour fragrance. Now that is nothing to write home about. That's not going to be exciting for you. But for me personally, I look at that and I go, oh, that's kind of a bummer but this smells so good that I don't care. I really don't. Now, some of you, it may be a deal breaker, but I encourage you to give this a try if you're after a very, very nice and different vetiver fragrance. And if you have to reapply, so be it. If you just want to use it as something that you wear for uh, going out running some errands for a couple of hours, it would be perfect for that. Smell clean, fresh, and different for those few hours would work great, but just know going into it, not going to be a beast mode scent and we would never expect that from the brand anyway. Same goes with projection. You know, it's not a room filler, it's moderate. In the heat, it will do better. Uh, winter time would not be a very fruitful time to wear this one, so get it in some heat spring and summertime and it will project more. Um, and it may even last longer as well. It's not having to fight as much. You can go heavier on the trigger and you could probably get some decent performance out of it in the spring and summertime, but again, still nothing crazy. Quality is amazing, and that's one thing I love so much about this one, is it can rival some of the top-tier designers out there. It really can. I'm not saying it's better than, but it can rival them because it is smooth from opening to dry down, start to finish. You know, It transitions beautifully from the orange pepper into the vetiver and woods and everything going on. A little bit of a minty green geranium thrown in the mid there, and it works so well on my skin. It smells fantastic, and it is highly impressive stuff. Now, in terms of compliments, it's going to be a good compliment getter. You know, it has that mass appeal to it. It's clean, soapy, and fresh. It's something that people are going to smell, and they're going to think it smells great. That's just how it is. It's not off-putting. It's not daring or challenging. It just smells nice. It smells pleasant. Now, it's not going to have the compliment factor like a blue fragrance would, but it also isn't going to be challenging and off-putting like a oud fragrance would be. So it kind of falls in the middle more so towards the Ambroxan blue fragrance side. Not quite there, but it's kind of in the uh, you know upper section there of really having just this trendy, new, fun, refreshing smell to it. And I think you'll find that it works great, especially in the warm weather. Spring is right around the corner. Summer, not far after that. Perfect time for this one. So guys, that's gonna do it for me. That is my thoughts on John Vervedo's Artisan XX. Again, for me, it's so good to see this one because it is just uh, it's the solution to the issues that the brand was having with putting out stuff that just isn't appealing to the fragrance enthusiast. Now, in terms of consumers, the stuff they were putting out there for a bit was thumbs up. Yeah, this is the best thing I've ever smelled, right? But when it comes to people in the community, you know, they were putting out stuff that just 
wasn't respected. And so I'm glad to see that they turned it around with this one. Hopefully they can keep building off of this momentum. I would like to see more things like this. It's like the old John Vervado's fragrances, right? It's like they they took a you know turn down that road again. And I love to see it because this is a brand that I've loved since the close to beginning of my collection. Artisan Aqua was the first one I got. Bought it off of eBay immediately out of the box. I love the presentation. The smell just blew my mind for the price. And ever since then, I've just been a fan of the brand. So it's cool to see we have something good again. So I will link this one down below so you can pick them up at a price below retail. And I'll link some of the other John Varvatos fragrances in general at discounters as well. But this one you can now get for a pretty good price on discounters. We'll link it down below so you can get it there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.